Hey, good afternoon everybody and happy Saturday. This is Tony with Peaceful Living Organics. It's been a while since I've been online and I have gotten a lot of requests to uh, do some DIYs live, uh, specifically my soaping. Well, today I'm gonna be making actually four uh, bricks of soap. The first one I'm gonna make today is uh, activated charcoal. So. Uh, Peaceful Living Organics, we have an Etsy site, and I've had a run on my activated charcoal soap, so I'm, I'm out of it. I sold my, I shipped my last piece yesterday, so today I'm, act, I'm going to be making that first, uh, along with uh, Pure Bliss, Total Relaxation, and a Sun-Kissed Bar, I believe, is the, is the fourth one I'm going to make. So I'm going give, to give it a minute for people to come online. Uh, on this particular live, I can't seem to see who's on. So if you give me one second, I am going to um, get onto my computer right next to here and invite some people to this live, as well as uh, see if I can see some comments. So bear with me until it's been a while since I've been on live. I'm going to uh, invite some people. Hi, Janice. Give it a few more minutes until people come on board and um, we will start making activated char char charcoal soap. So I've spent a long time before I got into soaping. Uh, I've been doing soaps now for about three years. When I first started, I, uh, I tried many, many, many different recipes. I did a lot of reading. I'm a reader by nature. So um, trial and error, trial and error, trying to get the perfect uh, soap out there and get the, the bars of soap so that they're hard and they last, which is very difficult to do, by the way, when you're not using the, the additive chemicals that are added into the uh, soaps that you buy. Hey, Miss Luann, the way you ladies uh, so nicely share this around, invite some people to this, I very much appreciate it because I can't figure out how on this on my iPhone. Um, anyways, so I did a lot of reading, uh, tried a lot of recipes, and finally came up to what I consider, I have three basic recipes. Uh, one contains uh, castor oil, which makes a very bubbly soap, um, uh, a little bit harder soap. And, um, the basic soap, which I use for just about all of my recipes, and then uh, one that contains shea butter. And the shea butter I use specifically when I'm making the Simple Facial Bar, which has very little uh, scent in it. Uh, it's made for the face. Uh, the activated charcoal is also made for the face. Of course, activated charcoal is fantastic for oily skin. It's good for the body. I've had a, a, very, a lot of comments on my Etsy shop and from the people that have purchased it that they love using it on their face. So uh, obviously because I ran out of it yesterday, so today we're making more of it. So bear with me again. We're going to um, uh, wait for a few more people to come on hopefully and we will make activated charcoal soap. I'll be right back. I forgot one thing, which I always do for this. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you ladies would be so kind as to share this around, invite some people to this, I'd very much appreciate it because I can't seem to figure out how. I don't have the invite button. Um, and I'm afraid if I click anything, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna shut myself down somehow, which is you know, pretty much normal. Um,
right, I do believe I can see comments now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today we are making activated charcoal soap. I have a crock pot in front of me, which, in front of me, which I hope you can see. Um, I have just to so what we let you know what we need. We need castor oil, which you can buy uh, at your local grocery store or from a distributor of sorts. You can get there. Uh, we need palm oil, which I have here. We need coconut oil, which is right here. It's kind of heavy because I buy this in bulk, of course, because I need uh, a lot of soap. Hey, Miss Laura, and thank you, Luann, for sharing. Here's my coconut oil. Which, as you can see by my face, that's kind of heavy. And then we have olive oil. So th those are the key ingredients to just about any soap. So if you have coconut oil, palm oil, olive oil, and castor oil, uh, you can use it or don't use it. I'm using it in one of my recipes today, but not all of them. Um, we need distilled water, which again, you can buy this from uh, any grocery store. For the activated charcoal soap, we need grapefruit essential oil. I have my crock pot. I have my mixer on my immersion blender. You really should try it, Janice. It is really, it's really nice. I get a lot of compliments from it. I really, for me personally, I like the Pure Bliss because of the geranium in it uh, and total relaxation because it's got multiple lavenders in it. But uh, uh, I do like the activated charcoal. It's great. By nature, I have oily skin anyways. Uh, it works really nice and it doesn't dry your skin, which is that there's a difference there. So you have to be careful with what kind you use because you can dry it. So again, what we need for activated charcoal soap, we need castor oil, we need coconut oil, we, can, we need palm oil, we need olive oil, we need immersion blender, which by the way, you can buy if you go to a, 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 like a Goodwill, a lot of times you can find them there. You don't, I don't recommend you using the same utensils you use in your kitchen to cook with to make soap because there is lye involved in making soap. I almost forgot to say that. So I have lye right here. I have my famous pink gloves, which I use when I start playing with lye. And some sort of mold. So I use these molds, which I get from Essentials Depot. Uh, if you're a Green or a Green Life member, I think they're called, you're allowed to get one or one of these free every six months based on the amount of uh, product you're buying. And they're great because you can stack them on top of each other. So it's a silicone mold. Out for you so you can see it. Typical silicone mold with uh, a cage that goes around it. I have talked to people that have used everything from um, um, boxes, cardboard boxes, to uh, egg cartons to make egg shaped um, soaps. I've talked to people that use, if you buy the half a gallon of milk, the cardboard half a gallon of milk, and cut it and cut the ends off and seal the end, you can make mold with it. So you don't necessarily have to buy molds, but because I make so much soap, I have invested in silicone molds because they're easier to get the soap out of, and most definitely the cage because it's uh, I can stack them. So what I'm making them, I can stack them. Again, Essentials Depot. Essentials Depot can be your friend when you're making soap. Most everything that I have on the table today, you can buy at Essentials Depot. I don't recommend a distilled water, obviously, because that's cheap enough and you can get it at the grocery store. I do buy olive oil from them, um, unless it's on sale at my grocery store. So my grocery store tends to like to do uh, buy one, get one free on their olive oil. And when they do, it is definitely cheaper to buy at the grocery store because I don't have shipping involved. So, all right, we're gonna get started. Uh, I have a scale. Don't need a fancy scale. I happen to have one that's got tear weight on it because I don't do plus and real good in my head. Um, and this keeps track of what I'm putting into the crock pot. So I'm gonna kick back over to my recipe so I can get the recipe proper. 
And hey, Christy. Christy is the person, I believe, that bought the last bar of um, uh, activated charcoal soap, by the way. So anyways, the idea of today is to, I, I make this soap and I sell it on Etsy. So if, feel free if you want to buy it on Etsy. Uh, but if you are using Young Living Oils, uh, you can make it yourself. So my idea is to share that out as well for people to, to have the ability to make it themselves and not have to go through all the ups and downs and pitfalls I went through when trying to decide on a, on a good recipe for soap. So kicking over to my recipe. So today I'm going to use what they, I call basic recipe number one. It's easy enough. We have a scale. We have a cup. So I'm lazy by nature, so I tend to use cups like this, or I did bring other cups out here. I know I did paper cups for the smaller amounts. This way when I'm done, I can, I can throw them away. So the first thing we're gonna put in, trying to clear my screen, there we go, is 1.4 ounces of castor oil. So we turn the scale on. We have our castor oil. add 1.4 ounces. Remember castor oil is great for adding bubbles. Yep. Adding bubbles to your soap also makes a little bit harder a bar and, and the activated charcoal soap I like to keep it a little I want it a little harder than the the stuff that we use every day in the shower. the crock pot get it started another thing I learned being in Florida I don't know if this will work in the, for my northern friends but um, I keep my coconut oil and my palm oil in the garage uh, keeping in mind that it does have a shelf life to it but um, I keep it in the garage so it's melted so it's much easier to use when it's melted I don't have to scrape it and I don't have to wait for it to really melt down in the crock pot so the next thing we're putting in is we're putting 11 ounces of palm oil in. Same with my palm oil. You can see it's kind of melted. So we're putting 11 ounces of that in. the scales there for right so 11 ounces of palm oil into the crock pot <laughs> hope everyone's doing well on this Saturday today is my uh, soap making day I've really my husband and I if you follow the page you know we've sold our house we've been moving um, so I haven't been live for a while and I haven't my Etsy shop is kind of hey Aaron has gotten a little bit uh, light on equipment so as I said yesterday I shipped my last bar of activated charcoal soap uh, so today I am trying to refill I'm doing I think four bricks of soap today so all right so so far we've had 1.4 ounces of castor oil 11 ounces of palm oil. We're going to put 10.8 ounces of coconut oil. And because it's melted, I'm not lifting this thing. We're going to, we're going to do it with a cup and hopefully not make too much of a mess. Again, 10.8 ounces of coconut oil, which if you leave in your garage, stays nice and melted and much easier to use than uh, the solid form. And I am making a mess, which is pretty normal for me. When I cook, when I bake, and when I make soap. If you look at my kitchen, you probably can't see a lot of it because everything's kind of off to the side. I look a little bit like an episode of Breaking Bad, but you know, 
It works. So we'll set that piece there. Grab some paper towel. Again, 10 point ounces of coconut oil. And now we're going to do the same with olive oil. And as I mentioned, all of the things I'm using, you can get buy at Essentials Depot. Um, I do buy my olive oil at with Essentials Depot, unless it's on buy one, get one free at my grocery store. And I buy it there, because obviously it's much cheaper because I don't have shipping involved. 10 point ounces of just regular old olive oil. So we have our butters, our oils uh, in the crock pot. And just to recap on the recipe so far, 1.4 ounces of castor oil, 11 ounces of palm oil, 10.8 ounces of coconut oil, and 10.8 ounces of olive oil. So now we're gonna move on to lye, uh, which I've had people tell me they're afraid of, but again, as long as you prepare for it and handle it with respect, um, lye is not, it's not, something to be afraid of. You just have to be careful using it, right? Like with anything in life. So um, I will turn the fan on in my stove. So I will apologize in advance because it's going to probably get a little loud. Get my cups for my lye. Lye is the one that I do not use and do not mix with the, in the red cups that you see. Bear with me, I am trying to find my glass um, measuring cup, which I know I brought. Here we go. Alright, so glass measuring cup. Again, I do not mix this with what I'm uh, with my kitchen uh, cooking stuff. So I have a glass measuring cup, I got it at the Goodwill, and I use this only for mixing the lye. So simple enough. Go ahead and hit tear weight, and then we add 12.29 um, ounces of distilled water. So plain old distilled water, got at the grocery store, 12.29 ounces goes into the glass measuring cup. Go easy pouring it. It's hard to go backwards. And get it as close as you can. Okay. 12.3 is close enough for me. So we have 12.29 ounces of uh, distilled water, which we're just going to move over under the um, under the exhaust from the stove, or you can do this outside, whatever makes you more comfortable. And we have 5. 5.27 ounces of lye. So all of this has been calculated. Um, the amount of lye and the amount of water that you add directly relates to the amount of oils and different oils that you use. Each of the oils, castor, palm, coconut, and olive, all have different uh, properties in them and require different amounts of, uh, of lye to go through what they call saponification. What saponification does is it gets, it's giving me a problem, it gets all of the liquid uh, moisture out of the soap. So that's why you let it sit for a few days before, normally before I take it out of the uh, mold. Uh, and after that you can cut it and then let it sit for a few more days to continue getting uh, drier. So the longer you let it sit, the harder the soap gets. I generally recommend 
uh, three to six weeks, uh, but I've heard other people use them sooner. So bear with me because I can't seem to get this one open. There we go. All right, we need 5.27 ounces of lye. I buy mine, uh, actually I found this one, I found them cheaper at Lowe's. Uh, it's household 100% lye drain opener. So you can see it. Uh, picked it up at Lowe's. It's nice and crystallized, so it's easy to use. It doesn't splash all over the place or uh, or anything to that effect. And you'll see when I pour, I pour a little bit in front of the camera. See, just like hard crystals. So 5.27 of lye. And I guess where I was going with that last statement, talking about the different oils and the different saponification rates, is if you start to change up the oils that go into these soaps or you change the quantity of oils that go into the soap there are lye calculators out there that you have to use uh, to determine how much lye goes into them but right now we're putting in 5.27 ounces with me. Apparently this lie is uh, going to get the better of me. Okay. Mm. Not too much. Batting a thousand today with the measuring. Okay, so we have our lie measured. simple from here. All we need to do, do this in front of the camera. Normally I leave it sitting on my stove. Slowly pour the lye into the water. And the reason I'm moving it away from myself is because you don't want to ingest or smell in the fumes. Easy enough, right? Carefully pour it in there. Now is when the lye becomes you want to call it, it, it will burn you. So you have to be careful. This water will get really hot because the lye will be working, activating with the water. I'm going to put it under my exhaust, or you can do this outside. And we're just going to wait a few minutes for that to get ready. Bear with me one second. few crystals on the floor so I thought I better clean them up. Again, they won't bother you until there actually is water on them and then they will bother you. But figuring my dogs drinking from the bowls, dripping water, and me stepping in it will be fine. So so just to recap so far 1.4 ounces of castor oil, 11 ounces of palm oil, 1.8 ounces of coconut oil, 10.8 ounces of olive oil, 5.27 ounces of lye, and 12.29 ounces of distilled water. Right now the lye is in the distilled water. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can. But you'll see, you can stir it, stir it with a stick or a spoon. Try to keep it from sticking to the bottom the best you can. And you can feel, you can feel the heat that comes off of this. The lye is doing its job. 
So, in the spirit of being careful, we're going to put on my Tony's Famous Pink Gloves, just to make sure we don't get any on my hands. Uh, you'll see I'm wearing glasses. I use them for reading, but I also make sure I don't get anything in my eyes that way. If that should happen, uh, you need to rinse your eyes with cold water. Uh, I, would refer, I would recommend not allowing it to happen. A pair of glasses, reading glasses, sunglasses, even safety glasses, if you have them, is a good thing when you're, when you're waiting for the lie. Now, what will happen to the lie, hopefully you can see this again, is it will start to um, get clear. still see it's kind of white milky looking <clears throat> uh, once it goes quasi clear we'll go ahead and add it to the soap so we're waiting for normally we're waiting for the soap to melt at this point but because I kept my coconut oil and palm oil in the garage it is melted so it is waiting for the lye at this point um, I will right now the crock pot is on high uh, and normally I start the crock pot before uh, I start making soap just so it can warm up uh, so I'm going to kick that down to low or to warm there we go, just to low, because I don't need to keep the oils as hot um, because they're melted already. And I really want to take some heat off of it, if, especially before I add the essential oil. So I add the essential oil almost last, after I've mixed everything uh, and I got the consistency I want before, as it's getting ready to go into the mold, which are these little guys right here, uh, I will add the, uh, I'll add the grapefruit essential oil. So, what's everybody doing on this lovely Saturday? I'm making soap, obviously, and then later this evening, hopefully, we're going out to dinner with our neighbors, which will be fun. Uh, tomorrow, we are getting ready for, y'all know that we moved, and we're getting ready to swap out our floors, so we're getting um, final tiling in some of the house, and then some uh, upgraded carpeting in the bedrooms which means tomorrow we get to pack everything up and start moving it because everything has to be out of the rooms. I'm not sure how we're going to do that. I'll let my husband orchestrate that. But we are, everything has to be out of the rooms so that the um, Home Depot guys can come in and lay the carpet and, and lay the tile. So that is our weekend. I'm hoping to be able to get some time in the pool or on a float or just have a cocktail somewhere. I'm hoping to get a little bit of that done. but. Uh, today I'm spending it restocking my Etsy shop, so I'm making all kinds of soap today. Uh, again, we are making, I am making today activated charcoal soap, which is fantastic for oily skin. I get a lot of compliments from people that use it specifically on their face to help with makeup removal and to keep their face uh, pH balanced. Uh, it's out on my Etsy shop, and the reason I'm sharing this is because I've had a lot of people ask me, that, you know, you're into oils, you're into uh, Young Living Essential Oils, well, how do you make it yourself instead of buying it? great question so that's why I'm sharing that and if you watch over the next week or two we'll be doing bath salts we're gonna probably make some bath bombs um, oh you're making cookies I'm coming to your house Kayla uh, we are making bath salts bath bombs probably some stuff with Thieves Thieves cleaner because I got a lot of new oily users that um, are not familiar with Thieves they have this Thieves essential oil that comes in their kit uh, but there's a Thieves cleaner that they can use and they can what you can actually do with the thieves essential oil that comes in your kit so i'm going to try to concentrate on educating the people that have purchased kits uh, that have all those oils on how to use them uh, rather than diffusing now i diffuse my oil don't get me wrong today i have lime lemon and stress away i put the recipe out this morning it's called key lime pie uh, my friends from the mix put it out there and i saw it and i thought oh i gotta have that and i gotta share it with my group and i gotta try it and it does smell amazing by the way so I do diffuse my oils but you're when you're buying young living oils you got to remember the quality of these oils is second to none so there are so many ways to use them on ourselves in ourselves a drop of lemon in your water uh, uh, 
facial spritzer for your makeup, for your mineral makeup, uh, makeup removers, just so many different ways of replacing chemically based product uh, that you buy over the counter with stuff that you make at home and save money doing and reduce chemicals from your family's life. So I'm going to concentrate on those types of recipes over the next several weeks just to get people started that have kits um, so that they're using them because uh, a lot of people buy the kits and then they want to diffuse them. Fantastic way to do it but really need to know how to use them in the products that you use every day. So and save yourself money at the same time. So let's see how we're doing. Okay, so we're almost there with our lye. We're waiting for our lye to get clear. So bear with me. I'm going to go stir it again. See the gloves? That is a fashion statement waiting to happen. Okay, we got it for probably another minute or so on the lye. It really has to get a little clearer. So, any questions for me while I'm uh, while we're waiting on the lie? And Kayla, have you ever made the brownies with a drop of peppermint in them? I've made those recently, and they are so good. I've had them in the past. Someone had a make and take, and I went to it. But I made them recently. Um, so I took a batch of brownies, simple store bought box mix of brownies, uh, and added uh, two drops of peppermint to the whole batch. And I had myself some thin mints. They were so so good. Just a little bit of peppermint oil. There's so many different ways, as I mentioned earlier, to use the essential oils. It's kind of like my job um, to, I feel, I love to share it. I love to use it. So I, I want to educate on it. So as I said, you can buy the activated charcoal soap in my Etsy store, uh, or you can make it yourself. It's up to you. And I'm always willing to help. Feel free to private message me if you have any questions about it. If you want to just talk about it based uh, over the phone, I'm willing to help. It took me a while to come up with a recipe for soap that actually came out with soap that will last. Um, not too soft, not too hard, not too bubbly. You want it cleansing, you don't want drying, all of those things. So the recipe that I shared today is a tried and true recipe that I use for my activated charcoal soap. And I also have these, you got to check these things out while we wait. I meant to show them to you. So you spend these this money on these soaps, right? So when you buy uh, a bar of activated charcoal, I think it's like 550, uh, it'll last you quite a while as long as it's taken care of. If you leave it in your shower in a wet uh, soap dish, it does not have chemicals in it, guys. So it will melt, right? So the fact that it does melt, although because you paid for it is not a good thing, it is a good thing. It means there is no chemicals in your soap and you're not putting anything on your body other than what I'm showing you you're putting on your body. So these are soap dishes. My son-in-law uh, makes these. They're on my Etsy site. Pretty cool, right? You set them in your in your uh, soap dish in the shower or on your sink or however, and you'll see it gets air on all sides, so the soap can actually dry. So you, you know, have to, I, we keep a, a bar in in our bath uh, in our shower. My husband uses uh, total relaxation. So uh, you just leave this. In the shower, the soap sits on top of it and it dries from all sides, therefore the bars of soap last longer. So I think these are pretty cool. My son-in-law makes these on a 3D printer, way over my head, but yes, on the 3D printer he makes them for me. So very neat. They're out on the Etsy site. That's one of them. Here's one of them for like a kid's bathroom. You can see from the side it's got little um, pyramids, I guess you want to call it. Again, you lay the soap on top of it and the soap can dry from all sides. So cute. All right, let's see how we're doing. All right, we're, we're about there. So what we're gonna do now, let's leave the gloves on, Tony, is we're gonna add the lye to the melted butters that are in the crock pot in front of me. So take your time, you don't want it to splash. Again, lye won't hurt you, as long as you're using, uh, what I call, a little bit of common sense. Pour it slowly into the butters.
Now we're going to use an immersion blender. And as I mentioned earlier, you can get these at Goodwill. I found them at Goodwill. One of the tricks with this, and I can't show you because I can't really move the phone, um, but when you put it into the butters, um, you tap it a little bit and hold it to the side. And what that does is it gets the air out. So the last thing you want to do is mix air into your soap. Okay, so let's turn this down. So it's not right. You just use it like an immersion blender like you would a pot of soup. Just keep doing this and you will see, let's see if I can show you. It's a lot of holding the camera and it's multitasking, you know. Hopefully you can see that. You see it starts to look like soap. Keep doing this, and this will start to thicken up. So it's starting to thicken up. it starts to thicken up. Stop. Once I have a good consistency, then uh, I don't see the need to wear gloves. I'm not telling you not to, but I don't see the need to. Just double check the amount of activated charcoal I need to put in. This is called the Clean Slate line, by the way. If you check out my Etsy site, it's called Clean Slate. Uh, I'm going to have a line of things associated with using activated charcoal as we continue to go. Right now, there's just soap out there. I want to learn how to make uh, good clay masks and sell the kits to make clay masks. Uh, potentially some sort of lotion. I'm kind of fooling with that and playing with that right now. But it is black, so it's interesting to play with. So we're going to use two tablespoons of activated charcoal. And just when I get done, before, uh, before I, actually after I pour it into the, uh, the mold, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle to it. It's called car ca uh, hello, Copper Sparkle. It's mica. It's all natural again. And it comes from uh, Essentials Depot. Let's take a look. Okay, we're thickening up nicely. So we're going to go ahead and add our tablespoons of activated charcoal. Which you see I have right here. You can buy this on Amazon. You can buy it at, I believe Essentials Depot has it. I, I want to say I got mine from Amazon. Just make sure it's activated charcoal and not some sort of knockoff synthetic version of it. Because then it doesn't do you any good. And got tablespoons out. Two tablespoons of activated charcoal.
copper mica that I use in it. Again, it's just to add a little bit of color to the top of it. People like a little color in their soap. There is no benefit to using it other than it makes it a little bit prettier for people to buy it. Okay, I'm take this out so I want to get this all black. Because I have three more sets of soap to make. I'm going to go ahead and try to hold this so you can see it. See how much thicker it is than when we started. It was very watery when we first started. your soap. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to break down and use my, use my mixer. There's a few lumps in it. And like potatoes, you don't want lumps in your soap. Good and mixed. Soap is done. Time for it to go into the uh, into the mold. I'm trying to do this so that you can watch me. Add my essential oils. Now, I pre-measure my essential oil just so I know how much I'm adding, and depending on which oil you're using, um, would be how much you're adding. So that is grapefruit. You would use one of the five ml bottles, uh, maybe one and a half, depending on how much you want it to smell like grapefruit, for the activated charcoal. So I, I don't, I'm not sure how much grapefruit actually is, like $10, $11. Uh, so you're making 11 bars of soap, keep that in mind. The recipe I just gave you will make 11 four ounce bottles of soap. into the mold.
show it to you. That's what it looks like in the mold. And what I do simply is to just take a little bit of mica, sprinkle it just a little bit on the top, not a lot, sprinkle it lightly like you're putting I would say like when you put cinnamon on your on your applesauce, or when I put cinnamon in my applesauce. Okay. This is makeup grade uh, mica that I buy. And where did I get this one from? Oh, I got this one from Brambleberry. So, um, it's lipstick, it's lip safe, body safe. I keep these little skewers around. I'm going to try to lift it up so that you can see what I'm doing next. Hopefully, simply twirl it. I don't know how well you can see that. Hopefully you can see it. It's really pretty. You don't want to mix it too much because then it'll go down into the soap and you don't want that. There we go. And there you did there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are soaping. So I'll go over it one more time just so you have it. And I also, if you look in the files in this group, you will find recipes for soap. Um, anyways, for activated charcoal soap. You need two tablespoons of activated charcoal. Uh, you don't, uh, 0.5 ounce of the grapefruit, Young Living Grapefruit Oil, essential oil. And 1.4 ounces of castor oil, 11 ounces of palm oil, 10.8 ounces of coconut oil, 10.8 ounces of olive oil, 5.27 ounces of lye, and 12.29 ounces of distilled water. So that is all about soap making. I have three more batches to make. Um, as I said, in this group, Clean uh, Chemical Free Living, under files, you will find uh, recipes for soap making. If you have any questions, really any questions at all regarding soap making or the use of the oils, uh, feel free to PM me, uh, and I'm happy to have a, a chat with you to talk about them. I hope you enjoyed today. It's been a long time since I've been out on live. It won't be this long again, I promise. I've got a lot of requests to do a lot of different, make a lot of different uh, types of product. If you have anything specific that you want to see us make or see me make, uh, let me know. If I have the ingredients to make it, I will make it with you. Laundry soap. I've made homemade laundry soap. Again, the, the recipe is under piles. Uh, all kinds of face stuff. Um, it is a caustic chemical, Janice, yes. Um, you just need to be careful with it. So it's it's part of the saponification process. It goes away. So as, when it it's in the crock pot, it's hot, uh, which which uh, commences the saponification process. It takes the liquid and the moisture out of the soap and it dissipates. So no, it will not hurt you. Uh, use um, protective gear when you're using it. You saw me. I always have glasses on and I have my my uh, pink. Um, rubber gloves on when I'm mixing it but when by the time you cut that soap and use that soap no it will not hurt you it'll be gone actually as part of the saponification process of removing moisture from soap that's what the lye does so just be careful with it I do hope you enjoyed watching us today uh, on just making activated charcoal soap and again if there's anything specific that you want to learn how to make or you want to know how to make with your young living oils or questions about the oils themselves feel free to just PM me and I'm happy to help you uh, send out as many ideas as you like, and if I have the stuff here, if I have the uh, ingredients to make it, I will certainly, um, I'll certainly make it for you. I hope you all have a great weekend, and Janice, you have a blessed weekend as well.